So engine technology, what's the main point of all of this? So the main point is that it's an example of society technology science and environment affecting one another and changing over time. Affecting one another and changing over time. So, as a lot of you discussed, you know, as, as the needs for different tech um, sciences developed, well, well, okay, well first, it's like, okay, we need to take water out of this mine. Well, let's make something that can do it better than a horse can. And so then um, a technology is developed, okay? But what's really interesting is that they didn't really, there was no, they didn't make the laws of thermodynamics then and say, well, these are the laws of thermodynamics. They just observed how thermal energy is transferred, but they didn't say, oh, well, thermal energy, blah, 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 so let's make this pipe go down here and this, that. There was no science about it for them. It was just technology because they needed it for something. But now we can apply a science to it and say, okay, now we can understand it using physics and the idea of thermal energy. So that's why here this technology eventually can connects to the science. But sometimes we make things first without understanding it, right? Sometimes you can see something happening, but you don't understand it. Like looking at the stars. You know, looking at the stars, you, people didn't understand what the stars were. And they thought that the earth was flat, you know? And that all of the, that we were, um, you know, that the sun was revolving around us, right? But it's just because they observed, that was an observation but you don't necessarily always understand or you don't have the science to explain it. How do we even know that we're right now anyways? We don't. We just choose to believe that. Yeah, we have confidence in what, what is accepted right now in the scientific community. But that can change. You know? Before, in medicine, when you were sick, they cut you and you bled out. That, the last time, yeah, and they just bleed out. Because they thought, like, oh, the, the blood is, is sick. You need to get the blood out of you. That's a bad idea. Like, we would think of that and be like, that's a bad idea. You need the blood inside you, right? Like, you need that. But people thought, okay, no, if you're sick, get the blood out. Ooh. Like, and so in, like, some old movies where you see that happening and somebody's sick and they have, like, a dish under and they're bleeding. Ooh, that's what they're doing. Because that's what they believe. So why, you know? So... Things change all the time. Science is evolving over time because we learn new things. Okay? And then this will affect society when we make those new technologies. Like as you saw, okay, well with the Watts engine, everything changed for society. People moved to the cities. And then, as we said, and Michaela, taught, your group talked about this too, there's a big impact on the environment. Right? The things that we do can affect the environment, and the environment affects us. So all these, these four things are very important for you to be able to realize that they're connected. So on a quiz or a test, I might ask you, how is society affected to, or connected to science? And give me an example. It could be an example from your engine project, or it could be just another example. What were they Okay. Well, tell me something about science. Just tell me anything science-y. Sure. So we have a periodic table of all the elements we've discovered. Okay. So how, actually, I thought of a good one. Can I use mine instead? Okay. Um, 
Um, okay, so the, I, my eyeball. So there's the science of biology. Biology is understanding living matter. So my eyeball is, is, is alive, right? Like it's part of me, I'm, I'm alive. So I can study my eyeball. I, if I understand how my eyeball works, that affects society because now people that couldn't see can wear glasses, right? If we did not have the technology of glasses, okay, so, so let's maybe connect this. So this is an example. Science of studying how eyes work. Well, then we could get a technology, the technology of glasses. Because if we, if we know how eyes work, then we should be able to figure out when eyes don't work. So if we know how eyes don't work, can we fix it? Yeah, we make a technology to fix it. Now, society is positively impacted because people can where oh, can can wear glasses? Sorry, my writing is not the tidiest. So people can wear glasses. So so that's an example of how science, technology, and society all go together. Now, there's maybe not a direct impact on environment, but perhaps. How could this be environmental? Well, we need like plastic and glass for the glass making the glasses and perhaps laser surgery. There's, you know, laser surgery of the eyes, there's lots involved with that. So the products, I'll say the products needed, yeah for the technology are taken from the environment. Now, it's not like you go out and you find some, like, you know, you might think, well, glass, how do you get that from the environment? Well, everything comes from something. Okay? Even if you make it synthetically, you still need raw materials to make that new product. And so everything comes from something. Jeff? Sure. Do you want me to repeat any of them? Okay. So this is an example of how everything is connected. And our steam engines and the um, internal combustion engines show how, you know, we have this, we have the technology of the engine that really impacts society. They can do all these new things. But now we have the science to understand it. And we can see how it's had a huge impact on the environment. Okay? So, so this, this idea of, of these four things connecting together is the main point, is what I want you to understand. Science, technology, society, and environment. environment okay? If you can, after, and I'm going to talk about these four things connecting throughout the entire course of Science 10, okay? So this is just an example. Now, in, with our engine stuff, it all connected with really explaining thermodynamics, too. Um... So we have our thermodynamic stuff going on here. So now we'll apply it to thermodynamics. Did anyone need that longer? Jeff, are you good now? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So with the first law of thermodynamics, essentially it's all about energy transfer. So if we were to summarize everybody's project, we could essentially say that Thermal energy was 
was produced to make steam, which caused mechanical movement. Now, the internal combustion engine was a little bit different. They didn't need steam. But for our steam engines, this is the main point. Thermal energy was produced to make steam, which caused mechanical movement. So, thermal energy was transferred or transformed into mechanical <coughs> energy. That's that's the main point. Is the transform Now the only difference with the internal combustion engine is that they didn't produce steam. They just made the gases really hot by igniting the, um, the, ga the, the gas. They didn't need that steam part. So that's the first law. So now the second law, how it applied to everybody's. I'll use a different color. Sorry. How this applied to everybody is no engine is oops, is a hundred percent efficient and some thermal energy was wasted or lost. Now, it's not actually lost, but it just escapes into the surrounding environment. It's no longer a part of the, the system. Do I need to go back up? So is the second law nothing to do with the second efficient? Yes. Mm -hmm. So then applied to engines, no engine can be 100% efficient. Yeah, so that's the, that's the main point of the projects. But you guys all discovered that in a very specific way with your engine. So if on a test I ask you to kind of explain this with an engine, you can just pick and use your engine that you studied. You don't have to know everything about everybody else's. Okay?